So I built an actual working model of the water cycle. I started out, of course, with some water, which I added to my little artificial lake. Then I added a heat lamp to provide the energy to evaporate the water. As that water vapor traveled up, I came up with a unique way of cooling it so that it would condense and then precipitate back down to the earth again. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at this model and see the ways that it's very similar and sometimes different from the actual thing. So we start out with our water, but our liquid water wouldn't be going anywhere if it wasn't for the energy from the sun. The sun's electromagnetic energy causes the molecules at the surface of the liquid to move faster and faster until finally they can pop free and go from a liquid straight to a gas known as water vapor. Now most people know that this process called evaporation happens from bodies of water and the wet ground, but some people don't know that it also happens in some other ways. For instance, Plants take water up through their roots and then release it through their leaves into the atmosphere through a process called transpiration. When animals breathe, they release water vapor into the atmosphere in a process known as respiration. Then there's this other really fascinating way that solid water, ice, snow, can go straight into water vapor without ever melting. It's a process called sublimation, all different ways that liquid water becomes a gas. Now the thing about water vapor is that it's invisible to the human eye. So you may be wondering, how do we know that there's actually water vapor rising in the model? Well, I can prove it to you. But in order to prove it to you, we have to go to the next big step in the water cycle, which is condensation. That's when water vapor turns back into liquid water. Now, how does this happen? Well, think about it. If we had to add energy to turn liquid water into a gas, then when the gas loses its energy or cools down, it'll turn back into a liquid. In our natural world, this happens when the rising humid air reaches higher altitudes where the atmosphere is colder. When the water vapor finally cools off enough, all that's left is for it to find a solid surface to condense on. Now, what is there for a solid surface up there high in the sky? Well, little tiny particles of dust and pollen can provide the perfect surface for the water droplets to condense on. And these little tiny bits of floating dust and water form the clouds. So here's what I did to cool down the water vapor and give it a solid surface to condense on. First of all, I took a plastic Ziploc bag and filled it with some ice. I went ahead and closed that bag to make sure that none of the ice could melt and get out. Secondly, I put that plastic bag of ice into a waterproof aluminum pan. The reason I was so careful to make sure nothing would leak is that I wanted to make sure that any condensation or precipitation that I saw was coming from the water vapor rising and not from the ice melting. Now if you look closely, you can see where little tiny drops of condensation are beginning to appear as they hit the cool surface of the pan. Interestingly, you can even see little wisps, like tiny clouds, that are forming around the pan where the air has been cooled. Now if we give this enough time, just like in the clouds, these tiny little particles of water begin to gather together until eventually they become heavy enough and precipitation occurs. Water is pulled by gravity back down to the earth. Now you may think that this is the end of the cycle, but let's look at what happens when the water gets back to earth. Sometimes it's pulled by gravity deep down underground. In a process called infiltration, it sinks down through the cracks and pores in the earth where it sits in aquifers, underground water deposits, or slowly seeps underground back to the ocean. 
But if the ground is saturated or already filled with water, surface runoff may occur as the water flows down across the land. Accumulation is what happens when water, well, accumulates or piles up or builds up or is stored up in lakes, ice caps, glaciers, or other such places. But this is never the end. You see, the water cycle is a continuous process. When water finally reaches its lowest point, it's just waiting for some energy to launch it back into the great water cycle again. So that's the water cycle, an amazing process that moves matter and energy around Earth's systems. Powered by the sun, lifting billions of tons of water high into the atmosphere, only to condense and be pulled back to Earth by the force of gravity. It's crazy to think, but this continuous cycle has been going on and on and on. The water you drink today may have been drank by a dinosaur at some time in the past. Have a great day, and as always, stay curious, my friends.